Welcome to another international podcast on Metallwoche. When we just listen to the news over the last couple of days, we learned that the Swiss vote to curb immigration in referendum, the US votes to defend Japan against China, the labor market in the United States is not as good as expected, but the experts decide the public into thinking everything is okay, even if the high heating bills are hurting more and more US consumers. Let's talk to a man who is known for not living in a dream world. Let's talk to Gerald Salente, director of the Trend Research Institute and editor and publisher of the Trend Journal. Welcome back, Gerald. Good to have you with us. No, oh, thanks for having me, Michael. Always great being on with you. Thank you. Gerald, the new Winter Trend Journal is out since last week. 51 pages, full of information. And you wrote in a note to subscribers, make no mistake about it, the events unfolding before your eyes are setting the stage for a transformational year. One in which the potential for meaningful change is equal to the potential for catastrophic change. What's on your mind here, Gerald? Look around the world, and you don't have to look too far. You just look east at Ukraine and what's going on over there. And now, of course, we know the dirty dealings going on behind the scene with the Assistant Secretary of State and the Ambassador talking, that was taped, an audio tape, along with the inclusion and collusion of the United Nations bringing in Moon to basically overthrow a government, like him or not, it's none of the United States' business, and how the United States looks upon the EU, and also all of the entanglements going on. This is nothing new, but what is new about it, it's being made public. It's in the, now it's in the public eye and ear. And then you go down over to um, Syria and Libya. You have civil wars going on over there. The destruction in Syria is just... I mean, these are metropolitan cities. And nothing is being done other than keep supporting the criminal elements that are trying to overthrow a government. Again, whether you like the government or not, that's not the issue. You have no business. Anyone has no business going into somebody's foreign affairs. And then over there in Bosnia, it was going on the seventh day now of demonstrations. Right. A total sellout. It was part of the Clinton administration's program and the neocons as well. And the multinationals to really take over. And then, as we know, that you know, Yugoslavia was quite prosperous country at one time. Yes, it was cobbled together with other countries in the past. But so what other country really hasn't been? But, you know, they were doing very well, but they needed to get them off that socialist program and get them into capitalism and, of course, into the whole EU. And now it's destroyed the, the area. And then you go over to Yemen and Bahrain. Take a look at Turkey. Oh, it's wonderful what's going on over there. It's a civil war, basically, and it's going to break out into that. Look, what, look what's going on with the Lirits at all-time lows. They're suffering as well as many other markets from the so-called tapering. So interest rates are skyrocketing. The economies are going down. And what does that mean? Oh, it's brilliant. Raise interest rates as your economy is sinking to protect your currency. That'll spur growth. You know, so then again, you look all over the world. In Thailand, the people have been out in the streets now for two months protesting the government. Again, regardless of whether you agree or disagree, this is what's going on. And then, of course, and now you have this, this madman, Abe, over in, in Japan, poking away at China. And again, you've heard me say this many times, when all else fails, they take you to war. And Abenomics has failed, despite the trillions of yen dumped into the system and the increase in their money supply, it's done nothing to really spur the economy other than jolt the stock market. And of course, the equities are only owned by a very few. And even that's failing now. It's in a bear market. 
from rising some 57% over the last year. And again, you see what's going on in Argentina and in Brazil, the riots in the streets. So it's a destabilization like nothing. And I've, I've left off a number of countries. We didn't talk about Africa, Egypt, or other places around the planet where there's destabilization. So I've never seen it like this before. And I've been in this business now 34 years. Gerald, you just mentioned Africa. I just want to know what was on your mind, because uh, we all know that day in and day out, you always warned, you always said that the US should stay out out of foreign countries. But what was on your mind when you heard now that the political leaders and even the German Bundespräsident, the German president Joachim Gauck said, Germany should play a bigger role outside and they should be involved even and with participation of German troops in Africa. When you heard this, of course, he said this for humanitarian reasons. The French are in Africa, we discussed this together. If you hear something like that, what would you advise the Germans? Stay out? Well, it's about money. It's about natural resources. Yes. They, I mean, everybody knows what it is. And, you know, what, what are the, the, the French are in Mali? They're right next to Niger where <laughs> they're, uh, the uranium deposits. So they, and they're mostly nuclear over there in uh, France. And it's the same thing. All the natural resources that need to be exploited by the multinationals. And all the governments are, are front men, puppets. They're nothing more than the wise guys for the money na multinational mafia. Let's call it what it is. This is criminal activity. Morality, not military, is going to solve world problems. And there's a shortage of it on the world stage. As a matter of fact, it doesn't exist. It's the gang that couldn't shoot straight. When you listen to that tape, that audio tape of the secretary, Assistant Secretary Newland, who is handing out cookies to the people protesting in Ukraine not long ago, and this clown that they call an ambassador, Pyatt, these are children talking. These are, these are stupid people making serious decisions. And guess what? You got them in a country near you. So what we have over here is a situation that I wrote about as one of the top trends for 2013. And it was war. And now you're seeing one media piece after another picking up on what I was writing about a year ago. This is very reminiscent to World War I, a very avoidable war, as most of them are, of course, set upon by ignorant people and military maniacs that had destroyed Europe at a time when it was growing and developing in a very, very civilized way. Now, of course, as we're going through a devolution, because things are getting not quite civilized, whether it's in culture or, or in architecture and artistry at many levels, we're, but we're also seeing a destruction being put in place by maniacs in charge. I know that you uh, very often talk about it, but... Um When we go back in history, what you just said, you made a comparison over to World War I. When we have more and more of these executive orders of Obama bypassing the Congress, that is something we know all of history as well. It's a dictatorship. It's a takeover. And he, all he is, he's a flunky for the military-industrial complex and the multinationals. I mean, he's done nothing that he said he would do, and it's only going to get much worse. So in America, I mean, we've lost our rights over here. Our Bill of Rights has been shredded, and day by day, the Constitution is being discarded. Again, look at the NSA spying on everyone. I don't need a, a, some clown in a black robe who calls himself a judge to interpret a couple of sentences on the Fourth Amendment. This is a takeover. And most of the people here, you know, they, they talk about the, the, this football player who may be a, not even a football player, a kid out of college that, that's a prospect for, for football in the United States that announced he's gay. I mean, this is the news all day long. I'm not making it up. I you know. know, Justin Bieber got arrested. They actually had on MSNBC... 
They were talking about the NSA with a congresswoman from California, and Andrea Mitchell, who's the wife of Alan Greenspan, cut her off, she's the host, and said, we have breaking news. And they broke away to show Justin Bieber being arraigned in court. This is how stupid it's become. So the people don't know what's going on. And number two, most of the people don't care. There's a small element that does, maybe five to 10%. Gerald, we both talk about this for a long time, but I think we get it more and more official. You just mentioned in the New Trans Journal as well, make no mistake, the whole game is rigged. And the stock market is manipulated, there are human beings trading, it's algorithm trading. Everything is rigged, from the library to the foreign exchange to the energy markets, everything is rigged. What is the way forward? The way forward is to put back into place regulations that existed that people like the Clinton administration destroyed, like the Glass-Steagall Act. And it's to stop making the stock market a speculative game and making it an investment game. But those days are over. I mean, when I was a young man, there was no such thing as private equity groups, hedge funds, vulture capitalists. They didn't exist. So as long as it is what it is, you know, you might as well go to uh, Las Vegas when you go to play stocks. As you mentioned, with the algorithms, with the uh, high frequency trading, and on and on. And, and again, it, this isn't speculation that the markets are rigged. I and mean, what are they? There are now investigations going on into the Forex. And what are we talking about? Trading about $5.3 trillion a day? Yes, And, and then you look, we know the LIBOR rate was rigged. And what did that affect? Some $700 trillion dollars over the course. And then you look at, of course, the gold market is rigged as well as the stock markets are rigged. It's a rigged game. So I, I don't see any way forward other than putting in strict regulations, and they're not going to do it. They can't even get that phony thing called the Dodd-Frank Amendment pushed through without it watering it down. And the only people now it's hurting are the smaller banks. So the small banks are going out of business and the large ones are getting bigger. The too big to fail will become bigger. So I don't see any changes. I only see becoming more corrupt because the very nature of what it's become is corrupt. You're definitely correct here, but I, I guess last week he was astonished as well that uh, even uh, J.P. Morgan, they, they must feel very, very safe if there is a proposal to have Bliss Masters <laughs> in the CFTC committee. It, it was denied afterwards, she's too busy because they're making a, a transfer of the commodity sector to a Swiss firm. But if you hear this, we have the Goldman Sachs gang everywhere, then you hear people talking about Bliss Masters, the, the leader of the commodity sector of GP Morgan globally, yeah, to be in front of a CFTC committee. That is getting more and more of a farce here. Huh? Of course it is. And you look at the appointments in the Obama administration. You know, the, the, the same people, they're coming from Citigroup, a new one's coming in now. Uh, the guy that's a trade representative, Foreman, a, another Citigroup guy, Lou's Citigroup guy. You know, so it, the whole thing is basically, it's Wall Street's hijacked Washington. And it's global. And not, let's not forget what J.P. Morgan Chase, well, they paid uh, 13, 20 billion dollars worth of fines last year. And they gave their, uh, the head of the uh, J.P. Morgan Chase gang what, a, a 74% increase in, in pay. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is unheard of. And then we have over here in the States, and I'm offended by this, we have the new vice chairman of the Fed is going to be Stanley Fisher. Well, Stanley Fisher, is, he was born in Zambia and is an Israeli citizen. Oh, he has dual citizenship. You know, save it for the kiddies. This is an outrage. That we have someone from another country just left from the central bank in, in Israel that's now the vice chairman of the Federal Reserve. And it doesn't even make the news. No, most people don't even know about it. Well, we don't have anybody in America. We have no Americans that could take the job as being another front man for the federal mafia. Gerald, it's a long time ago that you, or very early, you warned about the developments in China. Now you see that... Uh More and more figures are coming up. So even the figures there are probably rigged. But when you watch China, you said that uh, if 
the West is not consuming, China will not produce. So what is on your mind here going forward with China? Well, and when China is not producing, Australia, Brazil, Chile, Bolivia, all of those um, natural resource rich countries, Canada, they're not going to be selling into China. So what I think China is going to do, despite, well, interest rates are going up there. Right. And, and she, the, new, the, the leader, has said that they're not going to bail out the, the so-called shadow banking, but they are. And they have to keep the Ponzi scheme going, just like everybody else does. So I anticipate them to keep dumping in trillions of yuan to keep pumping up their failing system. It cannot sustain itself at the level it's at. And by the way, the same thing's going on in India. I mean, you know, what are they going to do? They've raised interest rates dramatically because of the outflows of rupee. And uh, they're not going to be able to sustain it. So I believe that in one way or another, surreptitiously or, or openly, all the countries are going to keep dumping money into the systems to keep pop propping them up artificially. And in China, you know, China has over a billion people, 1.3 billion people and a million problems. China's greatest fear are the people. And uh, if they start having rev revolts over there, you know, they're not going to be able to put them down, and they know it. So they're going to do everything that they can to keep juicing the economy. But it's not going to work, and I think interest rates are going to continue to climb, and they're going to climb worldwide, by the way. And that, to me, is what's going to crash the system, and it, because this has been an interest rate recovery. And then when that happens, they'll dump more stimulus in overtly, and then I see the price of gold and silver going up, at the next round of quantitative easing, but they won't call it that. Maybe they'll call it Yellenomics in honor of the <laughs> new chairperson. No, was it Fed chair? She doesn't want to be called chairwoman or, or chairman, so she wants to be called Fed chair. As we speak, she's uh, doing her first public remarks in front of the Senate or in front of the Congress. I'm not sure today and, and uh, the next time it's on Thursday. But uh, her first uh, press conference as a chair person, not a uh, woman, will be in March. You said you expected on our last conversation in December that things will get straighter and there could be an upheaval in spring, later in spring, that was something what you mentioned. You still stick to this line? Yep. By the end of the second quarter, that's our best estimate. And of course, as I said, you know, there are always the wild cards in there. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you, it's very hard to pinpoint these things. But this is, look, you saw how these markets were unraveling just a couple of weeks ago. And then you saw on last, last Friday, the Dow goes up handsomely after reports come out that the job numbers coming in at 113,000 were far below the expectation of 189,000. And the market goes up. And those revised numbers that were going to boost December's terrible 75,000 job growth, uh, 74,000 job growth, oh yes, they were revised, they went up 1,000 to 75,000. The market should have went down. The markets were going down across the globe. This is being artificially pumped up. It's only going to last so long. I believe there's going to be a financial panic by the end of the second quarter. They cannot sustain this. The only thing that's keeping go it going up is the stimulus being pumped in. That uh, What's that word that the, the head of the European Central Bank oh, you have over there, the Goldman Sachs gang head, Draghi? Was it not ongoing monetary transactions? What is it? Outright monetary transactions. Exactly. OMT, outright monetary transactions, right? Yeah. I mean, come on, who can make up a BS word like that? <laughs> Dumping money in as you need it. <laughs> yes, Gerald. Yes, we both know this. But there is, there's one topic I, I, I found in the Trend Journal, and I just want to, for the subscribers and for new listeners who are maybe or would like to subscribe, there's a very interesting point uh, involved. Not so often discussed, we hear a little bit, and here in Europe we hear more about Obamacare, but there's a topic, and you called your medical data is a hot commodity. 
what's mining your medical data history and why so could you elaborate a little bit what's on this story because i think this is something people should know about well everything that you have medically is uh is now available basically throughout the entire system and they're selling it so this they're, they're they're not only fixing you up they're selling you out there's no there is no privacy at any level anymore in the united states but on the other hand too there's <laughs> with the, The upside of it is that your medical information now is, is also available in terms of whether you need a quick diagnosis of something or a medical history. It's readily available for everyone. So it's quite disturbing. And by the way, they just re-announced again another postponement of other Obamacare features. This thing is a total debacle. And again, it has nothing to do with partisan politics. But most importantly, Michael, it should be looked upon as this is just another failure of the many programs that the government puts out. So whether it's fighting wars in Iraq or Afghanistan or time-limited, scope-limited, kinetic humanitarian actions in Libya, whether involvement in Syria now, of course, with the uh, AFRICON, that's what they call the, the new United States movement, that the, the military movement into Africa, whether it's the war on drugs or health care, whether it's education. United States, by the way, spends more per capita virtually than any other country on health education, and we don't even win place or show in OECD levels. Everything coming out of Washington is a total failure, and it costs you in your money and in your life. One of the big stories always involved are the students and the debts and what's going on from there. And there's a good story involved in the Trend Journal as well. So maybe the listeners should go into this as well. Last question, Gerald. We uh, just mentioned a little bit about gold and silver and we both are not uh, giving advice on this topic. But I think a lot of people were surprised that gold was for the time being holding the bottom here and it looks like that there is with all the upheaval what we had in the emerging markets there is a little bit of a safe haven bid in gold already involved and when you look for gold now what is your direction in 2014 not a straight line up, up I suspect but it's a kind of protection for people and it will come back to their minds Why would anybody want to be in these paper currencies when you could see what's going on with them? You know, as I say, gold is for my golden years. I began buying gold in 1978 at 187.50 an ounce. And I remember when it crashed in, in 1980 because I had also bought at the highest point during that day. This is a very different time. There was no Russia. There was no China. Everything east of the... Berlin Wall was in the Soviet Union. You didn't have this kind of trading going on where bu people are buying the uh, physical for physical possession. That didn't exist before. And now you're seeing even in the States, the level of physical possession is at all time highs. And the mints can't keep up with production around the world. So you have two very different markets. You have the manipulated paper market and then you have the real physical market. And the people that are buying real physical know what the deal is, that they want to have this in their possession because they can see, again, again all you have to do is look at your world leaders and your, your local leaders and your senatorial, congressional, whatever you like to call them in your country. And you have a range, it ranges between sociopaths and psychopaths, incompetent and inept. So why would you put your future in their hands, their paper hands, And the paper that it's not even really printed on anymore. It's digital money. So I see the future of gold very strong. I believe, as I said, there's going to be another round of quantitative easing. When that happened, gold prices, I believe, are going to go back to levels they were before. They were artificially knocked down. And again, to me, it's an artificial knockdown. And gold has began the, begun the year very strong. While all the equity markets began on a low note, particularly in emerging markets, the gold market started off with strength. So again, but it, realistically, they could knock it down at virtually any time because the game is rigged 
And the New York Federal Reserve Bank has its own desk on the trading floor in Wall Street. I know. So you can see how rigged it is. If I remember right, Gerald, it was Henry Ford, and he said, if I have to have a decision or a choice to trust in a political or to trust in gold, my trust is in gold. <laughs> I think it's 100 years old, this quote, and it's still the same and it's still right. Again, you know, why would anybody have any faith in, in currencies that are backed up by governments that you could have no faith in? It's as simple as that. You know, one of my sayings is if you look up to politicians, you're looking down upon yourself. So why have faith in people that you can have no faith in and then have faith in the currency they're producing? It's all a Ponzi scheme, a central bank Ponzi scheme. And when you look at the people that are in charge, you, I mean, you could see their connections. Whether you have Draghi from the ECB, who was a former, what, the head of the European division of Goldman Sachs, You have Carney over there in the Bank of England, former Goldman Sachs guy. You had the people that destroyed this country, derailed uh, Glass-Steagall Act, Robert Rubin under Clinton, Goldman Sachs. You had Henry Paulson that was under the Bush administration that made up the whole big lie of too big to fail, Goldman Sachs. You go around the world. It's the Goldman Sachs gang, the Merrill Lynch mob, and the, uh, the Deutsche Bank bandits, and one after another. Gerald, you publish... Not only the Trend Journal, you have trends in the news from Monday to Friday. So if people would like to subscribe to the Trend Journal, where do they have to go to? Very simple. Trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com. And also, of course, we put out a German edition as well. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yes, we have it. And of course, we make a link for this as well to the German edition. That was Gerald Salente, director of the Trend Research Institute, publisher of the Trend Journal. Thank you very much for joining us on Metabolism, Gerald. Well, thank you, Michael.